it's your boy Jermaine from Shoving Those Hogs back with another video. And for this video, I want to talk about some one of a kind hog nose snakes that you can't reproduce from breeding. And this is going to be talking about paradoxing. So sit back and relax as I discuss it a little bit more as well as show you some pictures. All right. So before we kind of get into the pictures, I just kind of want to explain a little bit about the paradoxing and how it happened. So the term is called chimerism. So basically two embryos actually fuse together right after the early stages of cell division. And so this kind of creates an animal that has a mosaic of colors and has the, the visual representation of two separate phenotypes. And so you get an animal that kind of looks like it's patched together. So now let's get into some examples of the paradox. And because it's two embryos fused together, these animals are not genetic, or these colors are not genetically passed on. So let's get into some pictures. So this first picture, to me, I'm not really sure what morph it is, but it looks like a super arctic. And as you can see in this second picture, it looks like it's a little bit Photoshopped, but as you can see, you have, um, you have some of the blacks and the whites that you see in the super arctic but then you have this brownish color popping in which is very unique and as you can see this looks like a newborn super arctic before it loses that dark color all right the next picture looks, looks like a regular albino and as you can see some of the the dark pigments popping in and with the albinos albinos should have no dark pigment at all but you can see right here is another picture of his full body. You can see little speckles across his body of that dark pigment. And you see under the belly as well, which is more noticeable. And here's a picture of that same animal. And it actually might be a, an Arctic albino. And then you have it alongside a paradox superconda albino. And a superconda albino has a lot of dark areas. And like I say, the albino gene should not have any dark pigment anywhere on its body. So this is very unique. The next picture right here is a coral or a lavender albino. And as you can see, it has some of that dark pigment coming in. Very cool looking snake right here. Love the color. This right here is a picture of a toffee. Full grown toffee. As you can see, some of the black speckling coming through. Another good picture. So it's kind of like a lower expression paradox. Here's a picture of an Arctic albino. And as you can see, most of the dark pigmentation is towards the nose of the snake. Here's a really interesting looking animal right here. So this is a purple line and a conda. I love the reds on this animal, especially with the reduced background color. And then you have that, that dark pigmentation popping in. Very unique looking animal, um, even if it didn't have the paradoxing. And here's a really pretty animal right here. This is a sable paradox. It was also named calico. And uh, this is, man, if you... The, the, the sable gene is already pretty by itself, but when you add in this paradoxing with this lighter color, it just, it's like, it's breathtaking, man. This is crazy. I would love to produce something like this. Here's a very unique snake, and I'm not 100% sure what the combinations are in terms of paradoxing. This snake was produced from a snake that was het frosted, which is caramel hypo, paired with a snake that was 100% het albino caramel and hypo. And then you have this crazy paradoxing right here. Very, very cool looking snake. Next, you have the Swiss chocolate, which is one of the rarest um, recessive genes. Um, the guy Jules in Switzerland, he's the only person that has it. Hopefully he proves it out next year and it proves to be different from the sable gene because it looks very similar. But you can see, look at the dark head and then um, the pattern kind of fades out. Here's another 
good picture of it. Very unique snake right here. And so now I want to talk about the leucistic gene because out of all the recessive genes in terms of paradoxing, I found this gene had the most paradoxing um, out of all of them. And in some of these pictures, I'm not sure if the leucistic gene is actually paradox. It could be the leucistic that white color may be masking um, a darker color underneath. And I'll show you um, with some pictures coming down the line. So this right here is a picture of a of an eastern hog nose snake, and it and it kind of looks like a palmetto corn snake. But this is a really pretty picture, and as you can see, that dark pigment is coming up under that white pigment. So this should be an all white snake, but you see that little paradoxing? And look at this picture right here. This is another eastern hog nose, uh, leucistic. And you can see like around um, the head of the animal, it has those, those dark colors popping in. But you can look at the pattern of it. And the guy that posted this on Facebook said he found this in Oklahoma, just a wild animal. And uh, he wouldn't reveal the location. People were asking. I'm going to be honest with you. We got to keep it real on this channel. If I was to see an animal like this in a wild, it wouldn't be in a wild anymore. I would pick this snake up and he would be living with me. You got to be honest. This is a very pretty eastern hog nose snake. And I'm surprised it managed to survive um, with it being this bright of a color because it can't really camouflage. Here's another snake. This is another eastern hog nose snake. Um, that's a leucistic morph with the paradoxing. Here's a picture right here again. I think this is actually a different one. But you can see, man, this leucistic gene is really, you know what I'm saying, causing these paradox. Like, why is paradoxing so common with leucistic? Here's another picture. Really pretty animal. Like I say, this is supposed to be an all-white snake. Here's another picture right here, another eastern. And whenever the and I, what I've noticed is it's kind of hard to tell distinguish between a plains hog nose and an eastern hog nose when they have the leucistic gene. Love this animal. Like I say, if I was to see one of these in a wild, it's not going to be wild anymore because I'm taking them with me. All right, now here's a plains hognose snake that was produced from a het leucistic breeding to a het leucistic breeding, and look at look at the look at the paradoxing. It's like a greenish color popping in, very unique. Produced by Brent. Here's another one, another baby. This is a different baby, another leucistic from a het to het breeding, and it pops out with this crazy color, this crazy paradoxing. Here's another one. Look at this one. Look how paradox this is. And you can see the sibling is a completely white leucistic. But what, like, what is this, man? That color almost looks like the Swiss chocolate. So that's why I'm like, man, I don't know if it's paradoxing with this leucistic gene or is it covering up another color? But look at this right here. Same thing. This animal right here looks photoshopped. This was produced. By the same guy from a het leucistic to het leucistic breeding. And I don't know what this is right here. Look at this. This is probably one of the most unique looking hognose snakes. Like, it's crazy. To, to say that these snakes were produced from the leucistic gene, from pairing the leucistic gene, and then it comes out with these crazy colors. It's just, I think something else is going on with the leucistic gene. And that's why I definitely want to invest in a leucistic gene whenever the prices go down. So maybe in a couple of years, because you don't really know what you could be getting out of this gene. Look how, look at this, man. Look how crazy this stuff is. And uh, like I said, because it's the two embryos, if this is truly... Uh, paradox you cannot reproduce this and also before I conclude this video none of these pictures were mine as you can probably see um, most of these pictures I put who produced the animals I got most of these pictures from Facebook and the images that don't have 
um, the producer of the animal. I left it off because I didn't want I didn't know if they wanted their name on the video. So all the all the people that produce these animals are actual breeders. So I'm just giving them free advertisement. So what do y'all think about the paradox and what do y'all think about the leucistic gene? I would like to know y'all opinions. Leave them down in the comment section and I'll see y'all for the next video.